CNN has learned that U.S. investigators wiretapped former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort before and after the 2016 election. Manafort is now one of the central figures in the Russia investigation led by special counsel Robert Mueller. With new details coming out nearly every day, our next guest wanted all the information in one place. So they launched what they're calling the Nonpartisan Committee to Investigate Russia. Joining us now, director and actor Rob Briner and senior editor of The Atlantic, Dave and Frub. General, thank you so much for being with us. Dave, can I ask you about the news first today, the CNN exclusive Paul Manafort wiretap. Not one, but two FISA warrants on him. What does that tell you uh, about the investigation right now? Well, Jeffrey Tubin gave a wonderful summary of the legal implications. Um, what, what it indicates is why President Trump first had his meltdown on Twitter 48 hours ago, that he must have known that this story was about to emerge. And it tells us something about the connections between Russia and the Trump campaign. Remember, Paul Manafort, he was under investigation before he became campaign chair because of his work in Ukraine, where he'd helped to subvert Russian, sorry, Ukrainian democracy at Russian behest. And what people forget about his connection to Trump is Manafort, it was Manafort who approached Trump and who said, I will work for free, which is not a big word in the Manafort vocabulary, free. Uh, I work for free. Why was he so eager? Why did he put himself forward? Was there anybody behind him? Such a great point to remind everybody about. So, Rob Reiner, how'd you get into this Russia investigation racket? Well, I mean, it, it occurred to me that, you know, we've heard this cliche our whole lives. You know, when our country is attacked, uh, politics stops at the water's edge. This is the first time that that didn't happen. And I started to think, I don't know that the public understands the gravity of what the Russians were able to do and continue to do here in the United States. They've attacked us. They are trying to undermine our democracy. And for some reason, we are not uh, 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 understanding the gravity of this. And I think a, a big part of that is because the president of the United States is not saying you know, in the Oval Office, you know, my fellow Americans, we've been, we've been attacked. And so I started reaching out to, uh, you know, people who are patriots and not necessarily of my political stripe to say, we're all together in this. Our country is attacked. Democracy is on the brink to, uh, to you know, if we're going to survive, we need to come together as Americans and understand what happened. Let me play a little clip of what you put together here, because this is a campaign. I mean, literally a campaign, uh, you're saying, to inform people about what's going on, you believe, with the Russia investigation. You, you have the voice of God, Morgan Freeman, talking here. Listen to this. Using social media to spread propaganda and false information, he convinces people in democratic societies to distrust their media, their political processes, even their neighbors. And he wins. Vladimir Putin is their spy, and this is no movie script. We're pretty much talking about Vladimir Putin there. Obviously, the Russians deny direct involvement in the U.S. election. I want to bring up two points you made there, uh, Rob, because they're very, very interesting. Number one, you called this a bipartisan effort, a collection of different people, nonpartisan. Look, there is one thing you all have in common, Rob Reiner, David Frum, Charlie Sykes, James Clapper. None of you like President Trump at all. I mean, all of you worked very, very aggressively uh, against him during the campaign and since the campaign. And, and number two, the contention that somehow people aren't focused on Russia. It, it, it seems that we talk a lot about the Russia investigation. You don't think that there's enough focus on what's going on? You now? guys do talk about it a lot. I mean, the media does talk about it a lot. And for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to be penetrating into what we what I refer to as the real Americans I mean patriotic Americans that wave the flag it doesn't seem to get in for for and I think it's, it's because it's complicated it's very very complicated to wrap your mind around all of the you know what what is cyber warfare what 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 is what have the Russians been trying to do since 1917 since then with the Soviet Union and trying to destabilize us and David brings up a great point I don't want to take it out of your mouth but about the idea of uh, they're weak now uh, militarily you can you can pick up on that and what they now do to to undermine us the, 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 the Russian Russia is not the Soviet Union and so they have to use Judah um, they have to leverage America's weaknesses against 
America, including above all our intense partisan and other divisions. One of the when you say what you know what's different. One of the things, and this is really Rob Reiner's work. We, he, one of the great contributions that he has made with this is people need a gold standard of what is known and what is merely surmised. We have seen among some of the Trump skeptics their own version of fake news, the, b the willingness to believe things because they make you feel good in the moment, not because they're corroborated. CNN has been very careful, but not if you get your news from social media, especially Facebook, not everyone, including among the Trump critics, is very careful. And so there are false stories that spread. People need to know what is the state of play, what is, what is known, what is guessed at, and what is probably untrue. You know, I do a lot of interviews with um, diehard Trump supporters, and what they say is, um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure Russia meddled, but it's not the first time. They do this. They do it to other countries. And by the way, other countries do it to it. And by, oh, by the way, the U.S. also meddles in other people's elections. How are you going to get them to pay attention to what you've compiled? Well, what you said is true. But what is also true is that the level of uh, their intrusion into our democracy is greater than it has ever been before. And they have succeeded. In past times, they've always tried to spread propaganda. Now they have actually succeeded. They are now in, and they have disrupted not only el the election, but they continue to spread. And, and now they're going to look at this site and say, well, that's fake news. I mean, they have successfully made you guys fake news, made the mainstream media and American uh, 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 journalism fake news. Well, they're trying. I wouldn't say it's successful. Yeah. But, well, 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 they are successful with a lot of people. A lot of people discount right. CNN, NBC, CBS. So what's they your discount. antidote? The answer is bipartisan. Mm -hmm. The answer is Republicans and Democrats coming together and saying this cannot stand. And make no mistake about it. If there was an atom bomb dropped on us, we'd pay attention. What has happened is conceivably way worse than that, because it's not just disrupting the election. Cyber warfare has the capacity to uh, disrupt electrical grids, uh, nuclear power plants. We, and, and as of now, they've already hacked into our, uh, nu our, our, our nuclear plants and our electric grids over 50 times this year. So this is going right. on. It's very ominous stuff. You guys are trying to bring it to the fore and to get attention for it. Good luck. We'll be following along with all of your progress. David, Rob, so great to have you here. Thank Thanks. you very Thanks much. Thanks for having us. All right, another big story, Hurricane Maria.